Hello and welcome to Xamarin University. My name is Adrian Stevens and today I want to talk to you about preparing your mobile applications for publishing. Now once you've developed your application, you're starting to think about publishing it to the world, there are several steps you'll want to go through to ensure your application is ready for your end users. And the things we'll talk about are platform independent and much of this advice would apply really to any application you want to distribute. So let's talk about polishing our applications. And a big part of that is focusing on quality. Our users have a really high expectation for their mobile applications. And if your app looks and behaves poorly, your users will simply switch to another app. And a big part of that is image quality. So make sure everything looks fantastic. Make sure it's crisp and sharp in every resolution. Also, Try and make use of the platform specific features. You know, take advantage of those cool features that make each platform unique and special. A great example of this is iOS's 3D Touch. You know, use animations to draw your users' attention to areas of importance. You know, point out your key features and show your users that you've spent the time you've put in the effort to make an amazing UI. Of course, always make sure your app works on all of your supported devices and make sure that your UI scales across these different screen sizes. Uh, localization can be really important and make sure this is done well. It's a really great way to help expand your user base. But you wanna make sure that you're respecting the languages and the cultural differences. And of course, testing, testing, testing. Test your app exhaustively. Make sure it's as bug free as possible and test those edge cases. Look for all the mistakes your users might come across and try and get to them first. Now, taking the time to add translated content for other languages in your application can be a huge competitive advantage. Users, of course, prefer apps in their native language. And for some applications, they're not usable if they're not properly translated. And this means that without translations, you can be excluding a large percentage of your users. And of course, language is so important to some countries and cultures that surveys show that people will pay more for localized apps versus a, a lower priced English only competitor. Now, most mobile app stores will test your application before it's published to their app store. When your app goes through the review process, if it crashes or behaves incorrectly, it's an automatic rejection. Now, this is true of most of the app stores out there, but even if it wasn't, users won't tolerate bad applications, and it's a sure way to get uninstalled. So make sure to test those edge cases, you know, things you hope don't happen often, but you know will happen periodically. And so what happens when you don't have a network connection or if it drops out unexpectedly while your app is communicating with a server. You know, what's the performance like on an older device? You know, are you still testing on that old iPhone 4? You know, what happens when the user enters bad or even malicious data into your application? You know, and does your app properly respond as the device is rotated? So as part of your testing, consider creating some UI tests to run your app through its functionality with Xamarin UI test. This is a free framework and it lets you automate your UI and drive it just like a user would. And then even verify that proper screens are hit, that behavior occurs and that the UI updates as you expect it to. You can then push these tests along with your application up to Test Cloud or Visual Studio Mobile Center and run it on a wide uh, set of physical devices with different form factors, different OS versions, and even different capabilities. And this is the same sort of testing that the vendors often do before allowing your apps on their store. And you'll often find interesting, even subtle issues that you didn't expect, particularly when trying it on different screen sizes. Now, with this testing effort, it can be very helpful to get reports on how your application is being used and any problems people are having with it. And this is the role of analytics. And there are several really great reporting engines out there. Uh, in fact, each of the three vendors we're going to talk about, Apple, Google, and Microsoft, have analytics engines that you can integrate. And they'll give you app statistics and even crash information. Now, Microsoft has an analytics engine and it's cross-platform called Hockey App. And we really recommend you use that one because it integrates really nicely with the Xamarin tools and the Xamarin runtime. So app crashes will get a full managed stack trace to really help you identify and zoom in on those problem areas in your code. All right, so, so you've tested your application, you've polished your application, and you're ready to build your package that you want to distribute. And there's five things you want to think about. You want to create an optimized package, 
You want to double check all of your visual resources. Make sure that all your images are sized properly. You've got high res versions and all the correct meta images are included. You know, if this is an update, make sure you've got your version number, your version information set correctly. And it's of course been updated from the previous version. You want to compress your app as much as possible. And we can use something called the mono linker for this. And then of course you want to build the actual distribution package. So here's something developers don't always realize. Your app actually runs differently when built for release versus debug. So make sure you always do your final testing on release builds and make sure you submit the build that you've tested. And when you're doing your testing, test on physical devices because it often changes how the compiler and the runtime generate code. This is based on the processor and the architecture. Uh, in addition, verify you've got optimizations turned on. This should be on by default, but if for some reason they've been turned off, or if you're including debug information, then make sure to reset the optimization settings. And keep in mind that all app stores today will reject builds that contain any debug information. Now, your app icon is often the first thing that a user sees when they're browsing the app store, and it's what draws them back to your app once it's installed. So generally recommended to make it simple, meaningful to your app, and make it eye-catching. Uh, ensure that you're also including multiple versions of your icon to support different resolutions. Especially make sure you're adding the high-resolution assets so your app looks crisp and amazing on the latest and greatest devices. And be sure to include other metadata like splash screens and if possible, even display an animation if your app takes a long time to load. And this will make that load time feel shorter and let your, your users know that your application is continuing to load. Now versioning, very important for both you and your users. So many software developers use both major and minor versions when creating updates. So major versions, uh, major updates are usually reserved for significant changes, you know, launching a new killer feature uh, or a build that includes significant app-wide improvements or maybe even changing the support, the compatibility for devices, maybe new OS versions. Now, increasing the minor version is often done when you're adding small features or making incremental improvements. And when you're submitting updates to the app stores, you'll be required to increment your version number. 